In Washington, D.C., there's a major battle happening over when we might send more support to Ukraine and Israel, if we do it at all. Yes, the U.S. Senate passed a bill to send nearly $100 billion after a marathon session had opponents arguing against it until just before dawn this morning. Fox 8 senior political reporter Bob Buckley, he's been watching all of this. So, Bob, what is the argument all about? Well, it's really about what to do first. Mm -hmm. About 70 senators, not about exactly 70 senators voted at around 5:30 this morning to send nearly a hundred billion dollars to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. But the U.S. House says they have no plans to take the bill up because it doesn't secure the U.S. border first. The North Carolina senators are split on all this, with Ted Budd saying that the huge numbers of Americans dying from drug overdoses and other bad actors mixed among the millions crossing the southern border each month means that we have to protect our border first before we can help protect others' borders. Most, most folks, they aren't opposed to helping our friends. They just think we need to take care of our country first. And America first doesn't have to mean America only. Meanwhile, Bud's Republican colleague believes that we can't wait for the southern border to be fully secured. We have to try to do both things right now. The point is, is you can't be a coward when you see something so threatening the democratic world order. And when you have access to the information that I have, it would be irresponsible to act any other way. I'm not criticizing anybody who voted against it. Maybe they have a different perception of the facts, but I've drawn the conclusion that we will rue the day that we let this coalition disintegrate and let Vladimir Putin occupy the breadbasket of Europe. Tillis believes that if we fail to send the new money to Ukraine, the coalition of nearly 50 countries helping them will fall apart, and that will be Putin's cue to continue to try to reassemble the old Soviet Union. The minute that he's given the opportunity to uh, move in and, uh, and take ground in Ukraine, he'll probably finish what he started in Georgia, and then he'll just step right across uh, Moldova and then move into the West Balkans, probably Bosnia, Herzegovina, uh, Serbia, any number of places. I think that he would achieve a critical mass there before he makes the fatal mistake of, uh, of actually advancing it against a NATO ally. And if Putin does attack a NATO ally, triggering Article 5, requiring us to join the fight, it is largely soldiers and Marines from North Carolina who will do most of that fighting. But Senator Budd and others say there is only one way to deal with all this. The truth is that this entire process it's not working. The only viable path forward is for Congress to force President Biden to get serious about border security. And then for the American people to see the situation at the border start to get better. Until that happens, we find ourselves locked in a stalemate as the world burns. Again, as it stands now, Speaker of the House Mike Johnson says he has no plan to vote on the bill that the Senate passed this morning. In a statement from the White House, President Biden said that he applauded the Senate's efforts and reminded the rest of Congress of reports that say that Ukrainian soldiers on the front lines are already running out of ammunition. Bob, thank you.